All right, Mr. Bafune, please respond to that. Uh, are you saying someone is eating? <laughs> <laughs> uh, be careful. I, I think be, be, be careful. Uh, there might be an expulsion on your way. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we are not eating at all. We are saying we want to go to the front line of the firing line. We want to go to the front of the struggle. But if Gutu shows us the, the GPS to the eating trough, maybe we might join. There's strength in unity, I think. Uh, but however, what I explained earlier we had become a ceremonial opposition. An opposition that changes nothing, an opposition that cannot change a law, an opposition that couldn't even appoint the, the mayors. And what we said is we need to re-evaluate, re-strategize, and make sure that we grow bigger. Let's make sure that we have alternatives. And therefore, therefore, if we don't realize that when a ruling party gets a two-thirds majority, we are in a de facto one-party state, then we are in trouble. We need to re-strategize so that we can grow bigger, get back everybody who is outside, and get you very much to take power. My name is Ngulule Rosmanda. To uh, Senator Gutu, you, you speak and say that uh, the, there was going to be a moment when uh, the, the, the review process would actually take uh, effect. And vis-a-vis and -vis the result of the July 30 harmonized election, um, would you say at what point we, was the MDC going to sit down and say we have failed to win this election, probably if that's the assessment that we would have made, and therefore, according to what you have said, you then agree to say let the 13 members of the initial standing committee step down and allow for uh, probably new leadership. At what point was that going to happen? And uh, to, to Jacob, um, what the, going forward then, and even to, to Senator Kutu, going forward then, what do you think needs to be done to put back the MDC train back on the rail? My name is Maureen Kademaunga, and my question is directed to uh, former Senator Obed Kutu. Um, when you were talking about internal democracy, you emphasized the issue of uh, freedom of speech. I wanted to understand from you, where does uh, freedom of speech begin and end? Because I've been ob observing um, over the past few weeks, you as a national leader in the party, uh, posting posts that uh, attack other leaders, the persons of other leaders, mal you know, very malicious posts that I, I then just became very confused. Is that freedom of speech or is, because I thought freedom of speech is only freedom when it's, based, when it's not based on the oppression of others. So I want you to clarify on that one. Um, I think that's 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 uh, that's my first question. Then uh, number two. Very quickly. I have yes, and then my second question, uh, Senator Gutu. I wanted to understand uh, if somebody writes a personal letter to another individual, and the letter then ends up in the. It's just the same thing with the WikiLeaks that you were speaking about, and you said it was just a rumor, and you don't follow rumors. How then did people take that letter to become the basis of you know attacking? Um, the, you know, the leader, the, the person of the treasurer. If you can just also uh, explain on that one. Thank you. My name is Denford. Uh, my question, I pose my question to Jacob Mafome. Uh, the problem which I have here is there are some people who are not seen there. But what do they are saying? Uh, Mr. Mafume was an MDC candidate in Harare South. Harare South has got one constituent and one what? Antiga, is what one? There was a presidential candidate, there was a parliamentary candidate, there was a council candidate. Out of those three in one word, Mr. Mafume got almost 7,000 votes. Then the, the council candidate, who is here, I don't want to mention by name, got almost 9,000 votes in the same constituent, in the same word. Then President Changirai got almost over 10,000 votes, in the same constituent, same word. Then the same person, there was some guts to say this was more is not, not popular. I think this one is better. I think we are not still there. At one time, Mr. Mafume wrote on his Facebook wall saying, When the day we have we held our rally in Gweru, in Mukoba, he said, I don't think rallies, doing rallies doesn't make any sense in his Facebook wall. But the same person who holds almost 12 rallies in Harare South. Thanks. And I can confirm this because I was the secretary for elections in Harare province, what is this thing? But my question is, we don't, we should also be sincere when we are discussing this issue. Thank we you. Not, uh, uh, 
she don't at one who wanted to go. Yeah, well, my, my name is Comrade Pride Mkono, and um, I am neither a member of political party nor do I have any intentions of joining any. And therefore, I, I would maybe say I am disappointed, perhaps, with the organizers that perhaps we needed to end, end up in, with us, the audience, that we need to respect each other and perhaps give each other more time so that we interrogate. Some of us don't go to rallies, we don't address rallies. And this is the only opportunity that we have to actually have an opportunity to interact with these political parties. And my concern as a citizen is that the two political parties are skating very fundamental issues with regard to internal uh, democracy. The first question is the question of violence, both, both within the ruling party and the opposition. To me, if the very act of conducting violence in any political gathering is not just backward and disgusting and outright criminal, it is the greatest violation of, human, of the fundamental rights of being human. It is left out in the Iron Age. And the greatest shocking event for me would be for anyone. Because the reason why we've been fighting ZANU-PF, I've been doing that, I'm sorry, Sir Comrade Zagnoj Mazuisa, to tell you this. I've been fighting ZANU-PF since my political maturity. It's because of the violent culture that ZANU-PF is exposed to Zimbabwe. And the reason, I'm therefore shocked if anyone who is aspiring in national office can indulge in violence. So my question is, to what extent is political violence within political parties being a threat to internal democracy, to the extent that others speak in closed door meetings, eating biscuits and tea with ambassadors, that this leader is inept and decisive, this leader is weak and so on and so But then they are the first people to go on rallies and say, this leader is the best. Is it because of, it, it, is it because of the fear of violence or not? <laughs> then my second quick point is on patronage. Patronage, the system of patronage. How, to what extent is political patronage in the party fueling all these divisions? Because the individuals that are within political organizations who are being influenced, you, you, could see, you can clearly pick out patronage, political patronage, economic patronage. To what extent is it influencing succession politics and internal democ democracy in your movements? Those are the two questions that I want to Thank answer. you. Thank you. Shh. Shh. Vava ne makora no darika thirteen. Tishroji matem matachu varim parliament. Do democracy a muta or a yere. Ye kuti imimi tangati shanda name itirimum MDC. Nasi makumuka maxena no mchitaura kuti. E vachangrea vana democracy. E chanoda kubunza futi chimuneche kuti. Pataka enda ku congress twenty eleven. Takano wiri rana chese. Tika tichenda ku congress twenty sixteen. Taamuna twenty sixteen yere. Chinuenda rana ne constitution yedu em sangan. Doda kuzo bunza keku pezi sira. Niji bunza Kuti, ye non MDC team e. You know, but Tunga Miri Wananiko, the Aniko President, the way you, my city. Thank you. My name is Bright. Bright. Mm. My name is Bright Chipuri. I worked for the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions for about 15 years. When this MDC thing that you are you're talking about was formed, we were there. So I want to make one, I want to make a, 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 a uh, I want to pose a question. I want to also to, uh, to make a comment in the way forward. My question is to say, is the MDC still a labor-based party? Because when you formed the MDC at, uh, at the Women's Peru uh, uh, in 1998, it was a labor-based party. So we want to know whether it is still a labor-based party or not. If it is a labor-based party, where, is the, where are workers? Where, where is the best city? Fine. That, that's the question. Okay, that's thank you, question. thank you. Go ahead, that's sir. A question. Thank you. That's a question. Then a comment. Then the Quiet. comment is to say, the comment is to say, the greatest problem that Changera did in 1998 was that when they formed the MDC, they invited what they called technocrats. These technocrats are the students, leaders. They came to assist us, but now they're giving us problems. This is, this is my observation. The Tendai Beaches, the Tendai Beaches did not form MDC, they joined. M, they, he joined MDC, did not form MDC. That's a, that, you must know that. Then he, the way forward, comrades, the way forward here, we can spend the whole week discussing this thing. But I want to give you a simple way forward. We are saying the MDC. Please, silence. Silence. Yeah. We are saying. 
Silence, silence, silence. We are saying, please go ahead. Say, please, MDC, you guys, Mafume and the, and the company, the united one. Because when you, our common denominator is unveiled. Thank you. A common enemy. Thank so you. Be in, united and uh, go back to the Working People's Convention of 1998 and uh, revisit it. Thank you. Way forward. Thank you. There was a question relating to violence. That violence is is very regrettable. I agree with you. Uh, I think uh, violence is one of those things that has the potential really to corrode and damage the progress that we've made over time. That's not who we are as a people, certainly. I think it's generally agreed universally that Zimbabwe is a peaceful country, that we are very tolerant, and I think it's important that we remain like that. For our part, certainly as a part, I think that is why throughout the election period and even uh, recently, as recently as uh, the Independence Day commemorations, President Mugabe has been insisting on the need to be tolerant of each other, to be peaceful, and to make sure that there's no violence in this country. Quiet, and quiet, quiet. And, and this, quiet. Is, this is why some of us find it quiet, very quiet, quiet, quiet. This is why some of us find it very, very disturbing. Very disturbing. Go to up a time, please. That someone in a political party is on his way in, trying to hand in a letter, on his way out is as assaulted, and it's moon. But I mean, what kind of leader is that? In 1999, well, let's me, let, quiet, let me quiet. Give, let me give you more facts. Quiet. 1999. Shh. Let's let look at the facts. I'm 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 very good at giving facts. You can be as dubious as you want, but let's deal with the facts. Let me give you another fact. 1999, Morgan Changirai said, President Mugabe, if you don't want to go peacefully, we will remove you violently. That is regrettable. That is not the kind of language we need in Zimbabwe. Let me give you another example. And, and I, feel, I feel very bad to be giving this example, but it has to be given to illustrate what I'm trying to say. Let me know Judah Jongwe. May he so rest in peace. Len Mojuda Jongo, may he so rest in peace. He butchered his wife in tragic circumstances. Quiet. And that goes to show you the disposition of the political leadership that we have in this country. You might say it's in bad taste, but it's factual. We have to deal with the facts. Right. Quiet. And my sister was sitting there. Mm -hmm. I, I like what you said. I don't know. I think she's gone now. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I like you very much because I think you are very clever, you are very soft-spoken, very intelligent. You seem to be very disappointed with what's going on around you. Why don't you come through and we see how we can engage you and uh, <laughs> you join Zanopia. Quiet, uh, yeah. Mr. Gutu. Yeah, maybe on a lighter note, I, 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 I can simply tell, tell my brother here, psychology, that my daughter, Yvonne, who only joined Zanopia, on one condition, over a dead body. Anyway, that said, <laughs> let, let me try to then uh, answer. Mo I think the question to me was from one Maureen Kademonga. I, I saw that coming. I saw that coming. Anyway, I, I, I don't want to dignify your accusations by saying I've been posting malicious postings, insulting people. Look. I, I, I am very mindful of what I write, and uh, I can publicly challenge whoever feels that they have been defamed by Obed Gutu's postings. To go to court, I'll meet them head on, and they will not win. I, right, Maureen, I'm, I, I'm, I've answered you. Then I'll go to my brother Ngululeko. Ngululeko, I think he's gone now. He said the issue, yeah, here, all game four. Go ahead. You said the review process. What has to be done to put the train back on track? What we are now doing really is we are just re-energizing the, the MDC. Sorry, let me, let me answer. In fact, I will join your question, Ngululeko. Sorry, yeah. I will join your question. 
Quiet. With quiet, quiet. One quiet. by the other brother there. The Shh, MPs silence, please. Silence, please. is a social democratic party. So ideologically, silence. we are benchmarked on social democracy. Unlike Zanupiev, they call themselves the Revolutionary Party. But each time I refer to Zanupiev, I advisedly use revolutionary party, revolutionary court and court. Because Zanupiev is anything but revolutionary. When you look to other parties that are indeed revolutionary, like Frelimo, I've had the opportunity of going to study the, how Frelimo works. It's very different from ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF has not changed its leader since the way I was born. And revolutionary parties change their leader. So all I'm saying is, as the MDC, we are saying leadership renewal or leadership and re-energization is coming but it is going to be done in a systematic and constitutional way. Morgan Changira has been on record to say it is not his wish to die in office, like Mr. Mugabe. He says, if you want to challenge me for leadership, you are game, come at Congress. You don't have to hijack and stay in the comfort of some hotel boardroom after taking one or two whiskeys. You then say, when you know that in your own home village, your own mother will not, will not vote for you. So all we are saying, all we are saying as MDC, we are a social democratic party. That's why I'm a proud member of the MDC. Okay. And that's why I've never joined ZANU-PF. Because I don't believe in their cult-based politics. I don't believe in ZANU-PF's command system where the leader's word is, 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 is like a fatwa. It's like, let, let me come. It's like very, an Islamic fatwa. Very, very quickly, Mr. Gutu, very quickly, a, a point was raised here by the person yeah. who asked a question where he said that uh, it, this is a labor-based movement. Where are the workers? Yes. My technocrats are where and where are I was going I'd like to you to answer. respond to that. Yeah, he, that's a very good question. Bright, do you? Mm -hmm. uh, he raised the issue. Is the MDC still a labor-based party? Yes, it is. But as you notice, it is, I mean, politics, there is all sorts of issues. I mean, there is dialectical materialism. Nothing remains constant in life. This, this is not the Obed Gutu that was there 10 years ago. I'm getting older. This is not the Ibo Mandaza that was there 10 years ago. We are all getting older. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot remain in one constant state. So as the MDC, we are evolving. And believe you me, the way the, the new MDC you are going to see is going to be more pan-African, more social democratic, these neoliberals have wind themselves out. We are going to repackage the party going okay. forward. I'm liking this. The renewal in Gutu is coming out. I think the longer we go with this meeting, uh, Mr. My Nenet colleague here is going to be family speaking for me. He <laughs> is talking about this thing. Quiet. So here, there was a question uh, from my dear friend, uh, Denford uh, uh, Maduku. Who, who was saying the irony? Quiet. Quiet. Who was speaking about the irony of, uh, I mean, you had the statistics. I didn't quite get to where the question was. But, but basically, Quiet. Mm -hmm. Quiet. but basically where the point we are making here is that as a democratic party, it shouldn't be an anathema to discuss succession. Now that the, the Congress has been moved to 2014, and it has been done, as you are saying, constitutionally, that was what was being requested for. Is it the question of someone else has to say it or not the other person? Now that it is in 2014, as you are now calling it, is that, is, is, is that uh, not constitutional? Okay. Eh? No, yes. But how do you purport to say you are now calling for a Congress when you first expel the people who need to contest against you? It does not become a Congress. It becomes an endorsement. So we need to be clear as to what we want to do. Quiet. Let's give and him time. Let's give him time. Please, please, can we have silence? You, your phone was talking about Quiet. Mm -hmm. the internal democracy. Yes. Where was it? Quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, are you, when you say you are a team, have you formed another party, 
or when you describe yourself as such, certainly not. We have not formed another party. We are the MDC. What has happened is that six Quiet. in the... Quiet. We must not mix. And this is where we are having it wrong. You must not mix the personal fortunes of particular leaders with the fortunes of the political party. So if somebody is suspended from a political party, it does not mean that a new political party has been formed. That conclusion, I don't know where it comes from and how you can come to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. When you suspended, when somebody suspended Mangoma, no one said another party has been formed. And when you say Team ZANU-PF, it doesn't mean somebody who has branded Team ZANU-PF has formed another ZANU-PF. When you say uh, uh, MDC team, it doesn't mean you have formed another party. It is very clear that certain descriptions are, dis uh, are descriptive. When we said MDC, when quiet, we said quiet, MDC Changrai, quiet, quiet, when we said MDC Changrai, it didn't mean we formed another party. Silence Everyone please. is talking to about 1999. It was known as MDC. We have not formed another party. So let's be clear about that. Okay. Then the leadership structure. Quiet. The leadership of Quiet. the party will be decided in due course when the Congress is then done. A proper and legitimate Congress for that matter. Thank Violence you. is always bad in political parties, and I endorse the comments of uh, my colleagues here. And uh, I think we should deploy violence at all costs. It has no place in this democracy and must never happen again. Then you should question yourself. It is not a matter of saying that we need to keep the same leader. The same leader can win even if he is contested. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you do not do crimes against democracy. You don't expel people, you don't beat them up, you don't change the structures, you don't do smear campaigns. My own question or observation to, to, uh, to you, uh, in addition to what you'll say, is um, do you think that enough has come out of this meeting, or perhaps it's just a heated time at this point, but there seems to still be this personalization, these attacks, this push to outdo each other and, and, and say clever things about each other, at each other, without really coming up with a way forward? I like the question that was point that was made by one of the guys, they were saying the way forward. So uh, in your view, do you think that we are at that level, we are ready to get to that level, we will get to that level? Is democracy really possible? Well, I think firstly, the fact that we are, we are vet in this hall, in these big numbers, uh -huh. is an indication, first of all, that, that there is a consensus, that there is a problem, there is a tragedy, there is a crisis. And as I said at the beginning, I believe such meetings can assist, Quiet. Can assist I don't believe it's late for an important movement like the MDC, an important factor in our politics with a substantial number of people in parliament. I don't think it's late to mend fences. I believe it can be done, it should be done. It's, it's sad that this meeting, one of the fir first uh, in this uh, crisis, is so polarized. Oh. I'd hope that the leadership of the MDC across the board would sit down and find a way forward. I, and, I, and I appeal to Morgan Shangrai in particular, because he's the elephant in the room. He's the elephant in the room. He has, uh, yes, he is. No, no one can wish him away, neither ZANU-PF, nor any faction or group of the MDC. Uh, thirdly, 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 at the point I made earlier on, the fact that MDC is imploding because they're out of, out of uh, power, that they are fractious, has to do with the structure of our political parties. And the GNU exposed the MDC as being no different from ZANU-PF in terms of its aspirations, which is simply to hold office, to get into power. There was the transformative element that was mentioned in 99. Someone mentioned the worker-based movement was lost over the last 10, 15 years. Can we, not only for MDC, for this country, can we 